Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new knife console for you. In front of us is the VDK Impaler. Uh, if you go way back on my channel, I had a Faro on the channel, the small knife with the little Persian blade done by VDK Knives, and uh, I really enjoyed that knife. I didn't think that that particular knife was for me because it was a bit small, and I think it was uh, not quite perfect in some ways, but this is Vlad's newest knife, Vlad being the owner and operator of VDK Knives. Uh, it stands for his name, uh, Vlad Dojomirov, or something close to that, I hope. Uh, and uh, VDK, VDK Knives uh, makes a few different models, and this is their most recent one. And it is a, a very brave and ambitious model because it is an integral handled knife, which means that the handle is a solid piece of metal, in this case, titanium. And so it was exciting for me to hear that Vlad was uh, undertaking this project because he's got his own sort of unique style and I was happy to see him come through with this and to be successful with this. This knife has been out for a little while and there still are some versions available. What you see right here is a full uh, stock version right here. And then you see a version right here which has actually been customized by my good buddy Fanatic Edge. Uh, Andrew over there uh, put his uh, touches on this and made it a little bit more EDC friendly in a few ways. And we'll kind of go through that. Uh, but I'm going to move this one off the screen for just a second, and we're going to go ahead and get some vital signs on the stock VDK Impaler. Uh, it's also cool that, uh, you know, Vlad being his name and the Impaler, uh, very, very interesting. I like that. We're going to talk about the name a little bit later, though, here. What you're looking at overall is a three and a half inch blade with almost three and a quarter inches of cutting length, exactly four inches to the pivot and about 8.3 inches in overall length. The handle is coming in at about 4.8 inches, something like that. This nice, thick, integral uh, handle is coming in at 0.54 uh, inches, right there, right exactly at 0.54. And the uh, blade stock is coming in at 157 thousandths. So that is a nice, robust blade stock and a nice, thick handle. And you certainly feel that when you're grabbing this thing. There is a very solid feel to this knife that is just unmistakable for an integral knife. So let's go ahead and break this knife down anatomically. Up front is a very, very interesting blade. Uh, some of these are done, I think, in S35, and some of them are done in M390. I think they had a sprint run in M390. I couldn't tell you which one this is. This doesn't have uh, the blade steel designated on it, uh, so maybe it's S35. I think the M390 ones say M390. In any case, it's done in this crazy, crazy harpoon Warncliffe compound grind that's just absolutely insane. Uh, I will say that the name Impaler to me means that uh, it should probably have a blade that's really good for impaling things. I'm going to say that this blade is not that because if you take a look at the front, you can see how thick the blade stock is. And basically, this is a flat piece of metal with this, with the tip right there. This is going to provide a whole lot of resistance uh, if you're indeed trying to impale something. So an interesting name choice on that. Also, this harpoon is going to provide some resistance, I would think, in terms of the actual stabbing into it in addition to that. So interesting name choice, but I will say it is a very interesting blade grind. You have a very thin, uh, high, flat grind going on here, and you have a rather robust hollow grind going on here. Maybe these are both hollow grinds. Actually, this is a hollow grind and this is a hollow grind. This is just done on different wheels, so you can see a different radius of each hollow grind going on there. A nice top swedge keeps it nice and thin right there. That large harpoon is a, a problematic thing. When it comes in and out of the pocket, when you drop this into the pocket, uh, this is pointing towards the back and it does snag when you're trying to pull it up and out of the pocket. A lot of people who did modifications, including my buddy Andrew here, did a reduction, did a, basically a nose job on this uh, warthog looking blade and really toned down that hook right there. And so it's much more pocket friendly. Um, I will also say um, the blade does benefit from having these thumb studs on it. You can totally use the thumb studs. Of course, I misfire it right there. There's a nice strong detent and you can fire it out. I'm sure a flipper delete would also be totally fine on these knives. I'm sure that there are some versions of that available out there. Uh, so moving back to the pivot, 
This thing runs on ball bearings. Uh, this, I should mention, is built by Wee Knives. Now, Vlad did design the knife, but the knife is built by Wee Knives. And so uh, understanding that makes you understand the quality of this thing. They usually run on ceramic bearings in their pivots. It's a nice big pivot screw on both sides. Nothing too fancy, but I do like it. Uh, it does use Torx bit construction, which is super, super nice. The pivot is very, very smooth, and the detent is perfectly tuned in. This is one of my favorite parts of this knife, and I feel like it's one of the main features of this knife, and that's the action and the detent. Uh, it really has a nicely tuned detent for either a flip, a thumb flick, or even a spidey flick. You can easily do all three of those, uh, and it's not so light that it's gonna come out of the handle. I think that this unique blade shape puts a lot of weight in this direction and allows for a very satisfying action and a very satisfying lockup. For all the knife nuts out there, you will really appreciate the way that that feels. The lockup is early and with a very solid, solid piece. There is obviously a, a steel lock bar insert there on the non-DLC version. You can see how they've added that to the end of the lock bar there. Uh, moving back to the handles here, this is probably my favorite part of this knife, uh, and that is this integral handle. Uh, Vlad certainly has his ergonomics down. My hand fits very nicely into the finger choils here. Uh, it's super, super comfortable, no hot spots whatsoever. The thickness really fills the hand in a nice way, and it feels really great in the hand. This milling back here provides a little bit of traction, but it's not uncomfortable in any way. It has a Wii-style pocket clip, and Wii does a perfect job with their pocket clips. This thing functions beautifully. It has a nice ramp, it has a nice amount of spring, and it's tall enough to function well. So if you've owned a Wii knife, you've owned this pocket clip. It's very, very well done. The handle is a full piece of integral titanium, and it is rather slab-sided. And so uh, Fnatic did a little bit of work where he chamfered the edges uh, of this handle here. Uh, you actually change the butt cap here, the end tail, whatever you want to call it, the tail end, uh, where it's a little bit more spiky. So uh, that's not a modification that I think I would choose to have it this uh, sharp right here. It does provide a little bit of a more uncomfortable area in my personal opinion, but it is an interesting... It is interesting that he could remove that much of the stock there and still have a functional knife. I just appreciate that he went to that sort of length there. This one is really just visually modified. You can see it's also received a very close to frunky blue-green color on it, which of course I like. Uh, and so it's very cool. So um, let me bring out another couple of knives right here for a size comparison. Uh, I didn't do that earlier. We're going to go ahead and bring out the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and the para 3 right here you can see that this knife slots somewhere in between these two knives so it's not the same size as the pm2 but it's a lot closer to that overall size oh profile right there my bad grabbing the wrong knife right there uh, i will go ahead and bring out another couple of interesting knives here is a something obscene company j cape just a bunch of titanium uh, flippers right here here is my 0392 brn gld and uh, just because I can, I'm going to bring out another couple of integral handled knives. Here is a Peter Rosenti Nirvana right here. And then this is a Liang Ma 15. So both of these are considerably bigger than this knife. So it comes in at a nice size. I like the sort of three and a half inch size range knives. Uh, it has a very comfortable handle. I will say this knife, if it had come with a different blade shape, I would have picked it up. This handle is a home run, honestly. I really hope Vlad makes a new model with a different blade and this integral handle, maybe with some rounding or contouring or something, uh, even if it makes it a little bit more expensive. This is a really, really well put together knife. It's well thought out. Uh, it's executed nicely by Wii Knives. Uh, it has all the things that a knife guy is looking for in a knife. Um, I would not want to buy this knife for my collection because it's not practical. This is sort of somebody's 15th knife. Uh, you know, if you don't want to absolutely have to use your knife, if you want a fun knife, if you want a cool knife, this is the way to go. This has all that kind of cool and satisfa uh, satisfying action that we're all looking for on some of these knives that we don't hard use. Now, this knife could also be hard used. It actually slices pretty well for what it is, 
But uh, with some of those limitations, including the oversized harpoon, uh, I just don't think this is an ideal knife for EDC, but it is a lot of fun. Thank you to Vlad for making this knife. Uh, thank you to my friend for sending this one in for review. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my channel here. Head over to Instagram and follow me there as Dr. Frunky. And as always, guys, take care.